the organizer is present. Please stand by. Your conference will begin shortly. Welcome back to the second portion of a special webinar from Wealthpire, The Power of the S-Curve with Bob Joyner. We invite you to stick around to the end of the webinar, and we have a special offer for Manny Backus' first hour trading system, a trial offer, plus a free copy of Bob Joyner's ebook, The Power of the S-Curve. Copy of Bob Joyner's ebook, The Power of the S-Curve. Bob, you had mentioned that a trader needs to focus on one trading system at a time, but how does he choose the right system? A lot of that's going to be dependent upon whether the listener is a day trader or not. I know not everybody out there is probably an active day trader. Um, a day trader, just to clarify some terminology, um, every brokerage firm that I know of defines it this way. Um, to day trade, which means to get out in and out of the same stock in the same day, uh, for example, to buy a stock long in the morning and sell it in the afternoon, uh, to get in and out of that one position, that's considered a one-day trade. And if you have less than $25,000 in equity, you're only allowed to have three of those day trades in a five-market day period. When you say equity, does that mean on account with a broker? Right. You've got to have $25,000 in cash to trade more than that, to trade more day trades than that in a single week. Okay. Now, if you have more than 25, and a lot of our listeners probably do, and then you can trade as often as you want. Uh, all you got to do is pay the trading fees to be able to do it. But you can trade two or three times a day if you want to. Now, that's a lot of trading. So I doubt if many of our listeners are, are trading that actively because that's, that's pretty hectic and it's, it's, uh, it's pretty demanding work to, to trade well that much at least. Um, did I answer your question? Yes, it did. We have a question from Stephen, and he says, what is this S-curve thing, and how can it help day traders? Sure, okay. The S-curve, in simple terms, and I explain it in the book, of course, but in, in simple terms, if you lay the letter S on its side, okay, then you get some pretty predictable um, tops and bottoms. And if as you look at a chart, oh, great, thanks, Rick. Here's a, a chart of STV um, over a six-day period. On the top part of the chart, um, it shows your candlesticks, of course. Um, going down below that, the next horizontal piece is your MACD, which a lot of people like to use. Below that is your stochastics. Yeah. After that, RSI, and then your money flow chart. Um, what I do is, and this is this is what I look at every day. I look at it, this chart every day, different stocks, and I look at different time periods. But this is one of the ones I look at. The S curve is, if you lay the letter S on its side, it makes a very predictable up and down pattern. And I picked this one because it's so kind of obvious here. Um, you can see it primarily in, in the candles, of course, up at the top. As that follows along the Bollinger Bands, you can also see it uh, in the MACD, um, but you got to be careful using the MACD. I won't get into that tonight, but it's not a very predictable indicator always, not hundreds of the time. One of the things that I mentioned in the book is that over the six-day period, if you had bought it the low, which was 1781, and I can't even see the top, if you had bought it at that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> at that low of 1781, and you had actually held it up to the top, which is 1986, ends up being about an 11% return, which is nothing wrong over a you know six-day period. But the thing that I point out in the book is that there are actually six very clear entry and exit points during a, the last four days of that and would have produced a more amazing 30% return on your money over four days. And that's, you know, that's nothing wrong with that either, I think, Rick. <laughs> and what I do in the book is I talk about all these indicators. These are indicators that most people, most of our listeners have probably seen before. Uh, the difference is trying to put it all together. I use the phrase in the book, uh, the congruence of opinion. And what I'm talking about there is everything needs to say the same thing. The candles, uh, the MACDs, the uh, stochastics, the relative strength, it all needs to be going the same way, and there are certain clues uh, embedded in all this information that's in front of you that tell you exactly when you should buy and when you should sell. And that's the S-curve. 
I mean, everybody's heard about, you know, stocks going up and down. Most people don't realize how much they go up and down and how predictable that pattern is once you see it. So, Steve, I hope that answers your question. I'm sure it does. Bob, why don't we pause a minute and ask another poll question. This is actually one that you had asked that we pass along to our attendees. And here's the question. What is the most frustrating thing for you about trading stocks? If you would click your answer, choices are how to find stocks worth trading, knowing exactly when to buy and sell, how to prevent big losses, and finding the discipline to do what I already know how to do. So attendees, if you click your response, what is the most frustrating thing about trading stocks? I'll give you another couple seconds. And here are the answers. Finding the right stocks to trade. 33% of you say that's a problem. Knowing exactly when to buy and sell. Also 33%. Preventing big losses. 13% of you find that to be a problem. And finding the discipline to do what you already know how to do. 21% of you find that to be a problem. Bob, is that what you expected? You know, I had no idea, to be honest with you. Um, I expected a little bit heavier weight on the final answer. Um, but... Um, but what's great to me is that 66% of that, those top two answers, there, those are things that we can take care of, you know? <laughs> you know, finding the discipline to do what you already know how to do, that, that comes with time and kind of working on yourself and having maybe a coach or somebody work with you on that. Uh, preventing big losses has a lot to do with stops and, and what I call movable stops, which I mentioned briefly in the book as well. But the first two... Um, those are pretty easily handled, actually. Um, and I mentioned, I, I guess, in the first one, finding stocks worth trading each day, I mentioned more of that. I go into more of that in my first book, which is uh, the Gap Down Trading Strategy. Um, but the other book, the one that's available tonight, uh, knowing exactly when to buy and sell, that's, that's pinpointed exactly in that book. So I think the listeners are going to really find a lot of valuable information uh, by reading that. I hope so. Bob, what kind of patterns should people be looking for if they want to profit from the S-curve? You know, it, it just depends. Um, you know, I'll give you three. If people want to do a little homework tonight after we get off the call, um, I'm going to throw out, and I didn't tell you I was going to do this, Rick, but I'm going to give you three trades uh, that happened today that are perfect examples of what I'm talking about, right? So if everybody wants to grab a pen or something and write down three stocks, and you can look at your charts later and look at them. Uh, the first one is ICO, ICO. Uh, uh, the second one is KLIC. And the third one is NEA. I'm not going to go into the names of the companies and what they do and all that jazz, but the first one is ICO. The second one is KLIC. And the third one was NEA. If you want to look at a fourth one, look at Wendy's, which is WEN, which had a pre predictable curve up today as well. Um, but those those trades, the first one and in, in, in going in order, though, the first one had a 9% uh, gain today, one day. Click had a 7% gain in one day. Mia had a 9.6% gain in one day, and Wendy's had a 56 um, they, they The differences may have been a little bit larger than that, but if you were to follow my strategy for exactly when to buy and when to sell, those would have been your return rates today, which... Uh, I think those are pretty strong, Rick. Thanks, Bob. You're listening to a special webinar from Wealthpire, The Power of the S-Curve, with author Bob Joyner. We'll pick up the rest of this webinar in the following video. I just want to remind you that Wealthpire offers the first hour trading system, and right now they have a free trial offer uh, available for anyone who is listening to this webinar, and you can get information about that from firsthourtrading.com slash details.html. Please join us as this webinar continues. 